Welcome back to the vlog. I know, like, what a way to start the vlog, right? Like, barely any views of the bookstore that we were in, um, which was Barnes & Nobles. I didn't get to video, really, in Half Price Books because it was so busy in there, and I just get weirded out and, like, go into this anxiety mode thing whenever I'm in public and have to try to vlog. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to get over that, though. But yeah, what a way to start out the vlog with just some book footage and then a wonderfully horrible lighting in this vehicle, but it's what I'm working with, so so be it. I just wanted to start this off. Um, this is going to be a reading vlog, so um, I was out and about with my husband Rob and we went to a couple bookstores and things like that, so when I get home, I'm definitely going to do a haul for you guys and show you what we got. Okay, everyone, so um, it's been probably a couple hours since I had originally started this reading vlog, and I'm back home, and I can't do this with these glasses, like, can't do it. Okay, better. I'm, like, totally blind now, but it's better because I can't stand making a video and having, like, the ring light on. And have it shining off my glasses and just creating this huge, horrible blur in my eyes. And it just, I don't feel like we can connect when that's there. So, anyways, I'm trying this little new setup thing that I have going on. Um, you guys are, like, on a ring light propped up on my new Lexington three-tier rolling cart. Um... I don't know if this light looks yellow or if it's, but whatever. I mean, I'm not here for a beauty contest. I'm here to talk about books. Books. And more books. I'm in my art room slash catch-all room. Um, so I'm trying not to, like, be looking at all the hundreds of millions of trillions of things in here. Um, I set you guys up, like I said, on this ring light. I don't know if I like it. You can change the colors. Like, I can show you. Now I'm blue. Is that one better? Okay, you guys. I don't know. I was playing with the settings, and I, I don't know. So, I have Flounder. He's going to, like, hang out and chill here with us on my lap. Um, I have my puppy doggy in here somewhere, Miss Gemma Gemma. Where are you at? Get up here. Come here. Come here. Come here and say hi. Look up here. Can you look up here? Look. Mmm, kisses. Oh. Kisses. Oh. oh, you're too big. There, look. There's your puppy. There's your puppy. Disclaimer, I look like a mess. My, yeah, whatever. Um, I don't care that I look like a mess. Like I said, I've come to try to, I'm trying to come to terms with the fact that it is what it is. I actually, um, from the very first part of this, when I started this video, I said we were shopping, um, and then I kind of talked to you guys in the vehicle a little bit. The day before this, I believe it was, I went to, I couldn't tell you how many of the little free libraries, and I found the little freelittlelibrary.org, like, app, and you guys, 
If you don't know anything about that, you need to check it out because if you're a book reader or you want books for your kids or you want to change some of the books that you have and swap them out for different books, like those things are just, it's just like you're going on a little book treasure hunt and you just never know what you're going to find in those. So I have for you in this video, I have a mix of everything because this is going to be considered my first real, I guess, reading vlog. So we're going to talk about books. We're going to talk about authors. We're going to talk about reading. Um, we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff that I've been doing so far this year in 2022. I have some really exciting ideas that I want to hopefully carry out and again I apologize ahead of time if I get really winded um, I'm I'm not I don't have COVID anymore but I did and the whole being a type 1 diabetic and all of that other issues that I have like chronic asthma um, it's just lingered the after effects of COVID have just kicked my AWS so I apologize if I sound, you know, like the creepy guy that breathes into the phone. Um, I don't know where to start. I'm kind of overwhelmed if I'm going to sit here and just be completely honest. And when we got home, I guess that's where I was going with this. Um, when we got home, I ended up reading. Big surprise. I actually started a Goodreads account this year. And I went back and I kept track of all of my books that I read last year from like January, February, March, April, and I think May-ish it could have been, maybe even to June. I can't remember right now, but um, I kept track of some of those books by writing them all down because I had a reading goal I wanted to meet last year. And I don't know why, but in the beginning of the year, I'm like book crazy. And then I kind of explained this before, like once I get to... May and June all of a sudden like there's like a switch and even though I could be like laying outside and reading out there and tanning and reading at the beach and like those things are still really fun but I'm just so motivated to be doing more outdoorsy things and I'm just I don't know I just for some reason I find that I don't read as much through the summer months so I want to change that um, I want to keep better track of all of my books, hence why I started the Goodreads. I actually had it a long, long time ago, um, but I only put a couple books in there, and I guess I never really used it. So, we're going to change that this year. Um, so, I updated all of those books in my Goodreads, and I updated all of the ones that I've read so far now in January, which I read all the time be it on like my Kindle app or you know a physical book an ebook or um not really that big into audiobooks but this year I definitely want to try some more audiobooks so that's kind of on the the to-do list for this year the other thing that is brand new that I've started doing this year for the very first time I actually have them right here so I want to show you guys because I've never done this before. Um, I shouldn't really say it. I've never actually did it this way. Um, I've kind of read books before in my past and I would keep like a little notebook or something and I'd write down thoughts and whatnot, but I've never technically like annotated a book. So um, I kind of want to talk about that because these are my first two books that I have ever, ever annotated before. If anybody is new and watching this and being like I'm not really that into books which then if you weren't I don't know why you'd be watching this but whatever I digress when you annotate a book it it's basically where you make up a list of what each color tab means to you and then you this is I know taboo for some people but trust me there is a lot of people that do this you actually highlight in your book or you underline in your book and you put the tab um, for me like I'll kind of get more into it but blue tabs are like sad and things like that so what you do while you're reading the book is you kind of 
pick out your different genres or your different categories, I guess is what we would call it. And if you read something really sad, well, then you put whatever color you wanted in that page and you could write why it made you sad or any of the feelings you had about the book at that time. You kind of just put your feelings into it. And at first I was like, wow, this is really going to slow you down though. Cause I'm a fast reader. Like I'm just like, Zzz. so sometimes I think that annotating a book really makes you slow down and actually really, you know, emerge yourself into what you're completely reading because for me, it's not like it feels like a test or a schoolwork project or a job or anything like that, but it slows you down and it actually makes you think about what you're reading and I've really, really enjoyed it. I don't know if I will annotate all of the books that I read, um, but this was the very first book that I've ever done it to. And this is called Before Women Had Wings by Connie Mae Fowler. And I am going to tell you guys right now, be it that I make some of these reading vlogs and whatnot, I'm probably, okay, not probably, I'm going to butcher pretty much everyone's name unless it's like Joe Smith. So I apologize ahead of time to authors or to, you know, anybody that's going to have an issue with me not being able to pronounce certain names because... I'm just keeping it real and I I don't know how to pronounce some of these names. So we're just going to be honest about that and I'll probably mess it up. So if you want to correct me below in the comments, go for it. I don't care. So after annotating this book, like I said, it kind of slowed me down a little. I could have flew, just flew through this book, but it did slow me down a little bit and then I realized at the end of it I really liked that it did that it slowed me down and I was able to put my thoughts my feelings on these pages and I can go back now anytime I want and be like oh so you know if it's a quote or something that was very memorable to me at that part of the book um I guess I'll give you an example like here is an orange tab that I tabbed on this page of the book and basically, my orange, to me, what I made for my own, you know, I don't know if there's really any set annotating things. I'm kind of new to this, like I said, but I made my own of what worked for me. And the orange tabs or the orange writing or highlighting for me was a memorable moment, a memorable quote, or anything that I could really relate to myself. So that's what orange in any of my books is going to mean. So on this page where I tap this, I'm just going to kind of read you what I underlined or highlighted, I should say, in here. Um, and it says, just what do you think gives us sunsets? Hmm? All those colors painted across the horizon don't show up out of nowhere. What you're witnessing are the moods of God reflected off the golden wings of my birds as they leave this earth and soar towards the seas of heaven. And to me, when I read that, first of all, I am an absolute sunset lover. I will be that girl forever. There's something magical in sunsets. Fight me if you think I'm wrong. <laughs> um, but to me, there's just literally something magic about sunsets. And this quote from this book right there just was like, oh, that I really liked that quote. And it was something memorable out of the book that I knew that I would like. So I highlighted that in orange. Um, some pages, then I'll write my feelings down. So like on this page, for example, I don't know how well you can see this, but I have some of my own writing in here. This one is a quote that I tabbed with the dark purple. And dark purple for me is something that annoys me, makes me angry, um... And that's kind of just what I used. So I highlighted this quote that says, I've seen you get that same faraway look in your blue eyes. It's as if you're not even with us, as if you're in some sort of dreamland. Listen to me, bird. Dreaming is for fools, and I don't ever want to be accused of raising up a little fool. That made me so mad, considering in this book, that was this girl's mother talking to her. And then what I wrote down here... Um, 
It says, this seriously annoys me. Let children have as many dreams as they can dream because it just really just upset me. Like, how can a parent say that? Oh, this book, I don't know if I'm going to go into a full review on it in this vlog, but I guess if you guys want me to, we could talk about it maybe. This book had me kind of on a roller coaster of emotions, which you can kind of see from some of these tabs in here. I had a lot of things to say and think about this book. It's kind of controversial. It's hard to kind of explain, but there's a lot of trigger, trigger warnings in this book. So this book pretty much has things like suicide, child abuse, child neglect. Um, there's just a lot of different triggering things that happen in this book. And I really kind of rode the uh, roller coasters of emotions through this book, and it was good. There's parts of it that I'm going to take with me probably forever that really just make you kind of stop and think about life, the cards that you were dealt, um, the different views of people and how parents can act towards children and just family dynamic and things like that. So, like I said, I don't want to get into a full review of this because I have so much other stuff to talk about um, and hauls and things that I want to show you yet. But this was my very first book I annotated. And like I said, I look kind of like a mess because, you know, I came home and laid on the couch and grabbed my little annotating bag here and that I keep everything in. And I finished this book, which is now my second book that I've annotated and I had fun doing it in this book as well. This is called Me and Earl and the Dying Girl, and it's by Jesse Andrews. This was a good book. It really, really was a good book. I thought I would be crying through this book because pretty much it's about these two friends that become closer friends with a girl in their class after finding out she has leukemia and she's dying. And I don't want to have, like, put any spoilers out there, so I guess that's all I'm going to say about this book. It is a fairly new book. The one thing I guess I will say about this book is blue tabs for me are sad. Green ones are funny. So I felt kind of bad that there were so many green book um, tabs in here, but there were just so many parts of this book that I was literally laughing out loud while I was reading it. Like, my dog would look at me, my cat would look at me, my other dog would look at me, my husband would walk through the room and kind of look at me, and I was just like, I guess it's probably because I'm a big child myself, and some of the things that these kids were just saying and how they were explaining things and whatnot, I was just like, I was just cracking up at some of this stuff, and though the the book is about cancer and death and things like that, it was really written from a different perspective, I think, than some of all the other books that are geared towards this scenario. There are just parts of this and let you kind of into the teenage mind. And it's funny. Like, they're talking about all kinds of stuff in this book. So to me, there was just so many parts of it that were funny. And I really liked this book as well. And this was my second book that I annotated. So there's that. And now speaking of... Um, this is what I said I have. This was just like a $3 little zipper pouch from Walmart that was on clearance. And it's got a really cute rainbow zipper. So I picked this up to keep all of my annotating stuff in here, I guess, um, for now until I figure out what I'm doing. Because like I said, those are the first two books I've ever done that to. have my little like cheat sheet kind of key card that I made. Um, and I have just like my different colored highlighters and my different pens that I was using in correspondence with the color of the tabs, which I have up here. And then I have my list. Um, I can kind of read it to you guys real quick. Um, it says my book annotation tab colors, and you can probably hear my dog whining because the cat is putting her paws underneath the door and Gemma is like freaking out about it. Stop, Gemma. Get up here and lay down. Um, so pink for me are quotes and moments that I absolutely love, love, love. Um, orange are relatable and memorable moments or quotes or just things in the book that I want to remember. Yellow is something very shocking in the, <laughs> in the book. Um, 
it's like either a very shocking moment or a very important key moment that I might have an idea about or maybe like foreshadows maybe into something. And green for me was funny moments or funny quotes in the book. Just anything that makes me laugh or giggle. Um, that sounded so weird. Laugh or <laughs> giggle? Like, am I 40 or am I 11? I, I don't know. Like I said, blue was sad moments, sad quotes in the book that make me cry or tear up or just make me kind of get all up in my feels. And the light purple were just character descriptions that were maybe important, things I wanted to remember about specific characters in the book. And then my dark purple tabs were when I was really angry and annoyed at different either quotes or moments or sayings or just anything that annoyed me, which things can annoy me quite easily. So this is what I use for my book annotating. So it's just all in this for right now. And like I said, as far as this goes, I can go more in depth in it. If you guys want me to, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, we're going to be done on that topic for now. So I'm going to set this over here. I'm going to set my books over here so my dog quits stepping on them. So one last thing about this. Any book that I obviously annotate or I write in, I'm going to be keeping on my bookshelves. Like, they're going to be for me so that I can go back anytime I want and flip to said page and be like, oh, this is what made me laugh. Oh, this is what made me angry. And like I said, I'm not going to annotate every book. I think books that I really get into just after the first couple paragraphs, after the first couple pages, I kind of just know if I'm going to annotate it or not. And if I feel like it or not, if I'm reading in the bathtub or not, like those might be all things that kind of play a part when it comes to annotating books or not. So the next thing Flounder and I want to do is I got some packages in the mail so we could open those from Amazon. I got some books today, I got some books the other day, and I have books from the free library. So I'm trying to go over my little checklist in my head and be like, what did I all want to talk about in this vlog? I kind of feel like I'm trying to put way too much into this vlog because it's the first dedicated reading vlog that I'm ever going to have on my channel. So I don't want to like go insanely crazy because I don't know if this is going to be something any of my wonderful randoms or new randoms are going to be interested in hearing about, but books is a huge, books are a huge part of my life and they're a part of me and I figure since this is my channel, I want to branch out some more. I've been watching some amazing like booktubers, I guess they call them, and I've just gotten like sucked in to the booktuber world on YouTube, on Bookstagram, on Instagram, like I have. I always post pictures on my Snapchat throughout the day of like books I'm reading and different things like that. So again, all of that media for my Instagram or my Snapchat will be listed below this video. Um, the cat is pawing at the door which I just, I knew this was going to happen if I closed the door. But if I didn't close the door, then you're going to hear my husband in VR virtual reality world out there like doing some funky beat thing or swinging from vines and being a ninja and stuff. I don't know what he does, but yeah. So I apologize if you can hear the dog. Um, I guess what I want to start with first is I have a whole thing of books right here. They're all from the free library except for two of them which I got from Goodwill so I'm just going to show you those real quick. Gemma come on lay down. You heard me lay down. Get up here. Get up here. Lay down. Don't worry about the kitty cat. Okay so um this book right here is a book that I got from Goodwill, and it looked really interesting. It's called The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley, and basically it says, reminiscent of an Agatha Christie at her best with an extra dose of acid. So um, I can read you a little bit of the back of this book real quick. It is a New Year's reunion in the remote Scottish wilderness. 
Ghost, The Beautiful One, The Golden Couple, The Volatile One, The New Parent, The Quiet One, The City Boy, and The Outsider. One of these friends is a murderer and won't make it out alive. So one of the genres of books that I personally really love reading are kind of horror, mystery, true crime, thriller type books. Love those. Like really, really love those books. And I love reading a wide variety of books. I really do. Young, you know, young adult books and just anything you can think of. Mystery, fiction, nonfiction. I love it all. I love books, period. I'm trying to, you know, I'm pretty non-discriminative when it comes to bit to books. So this book I picked up because, first of all, look at how beautiful this woman is. Like, how stunning is this entire cover? This whole book is just... And the best part about it is it was 99 cents, just like this book was. This was also 99 cents. Um, but I picked it up because literally she's so beautiful and this pink and yellow cover just kind of like, mm-hmm, you had me at hello. So this book is called um, If I Had Your Face by Franch Francis Cha, I believe, and yeah, if I had your face, I would be like, Vogue, strike a pose. Beautiful. She's beautiful. So this one sounded really, really good too. I took the dust jacket off. Gemma, will you just lay down? Good Lord, dog. And it's just black with gold writing. But I'll kind of give you a quick synopsis of what this one is. Um, and they say it's a riveting debut novel. Four young women making their way in a world defined by impossible standards of beauty after our room saloons, catering to wealthy men, ruthless social hierarchies, and K-pop mania. So the first quote in this book right here underneath the part I just read you says, even as a girl, I knew the only chance I had was to change my face, even before a fortune teller told me so. So this looks really interesting as well. What I wanted to also bring up is I am setting up a bedroom. You guys who have watched my regular vlogs are probably sick of hearing me say it and not do it yet, but I have like three bookshelves that one is built, two that I have to build yet, um, and upstairs I'm going to have a library kind of office room that I'm making for myself, and Books that I haven't read yet are going to be on there, and after I read a book, if I really like it, I'm going to keep the book, or if it's kind of like a book that I, I most likely won't pick up and read again, um, I usually either try to donate them or take them to the free libraries when I go and all that fun stuff. So will I keep these books forever? I honestly don't know. It kind of all depends after I read them. So speaking of the free libraries... I did pick up all of these right here, and I was like, shooketh. I totally scored, and I could have taken so many more books, but I didn't have enough with me, um, and I don't like taking books from those little free libraries unless I'm leaving a book, so I did only grab four this time around, and I could have grabbed so many more. I couldn't believe how many, like, books that are on bookshelves when I walk into Barnes and Noble or wherever, like, how many covers that I can realize that I've seen other people review or read, and I go to some of these, like, little free libraries, and I'm like, this is a new book, or holy crap, this is, like, a very, like, on the high TBR list, which is a to-be-read list for a lot of people, and I'm like, this is awesome. So, like I said, I like donating, I like finding new ones, so the free libraries are just amazing. Okay, I'll shut up now. Let's get into the haul. So this one right here is called Spoonbenders, a novel by Daryl Gregory. Hilarious, heartfelt, and brimming with humanity. So this is what it looks like. I always do this, I don't know why, because I always love seeing what's under the dust jacket. Like, it's, this is a really pretty blue with, like, a silver color, if you can see that. So, basically, what I'm kind of getting out of this is this is where these people kind of meet. They're working with the CIA, 
um, they have kind of like superpowers. One of the guys has sleight of hand. He volunteers for a study on ESP that's secretly backed by the CIA where he meets Maureen McKinnon. It's not just her piercing blue eyes that leave Teddy forever charmed, but her mind. Uh, says Marie is a genuine psychic of immense and mysterious powers. So basically it says they get into like this courtship, they marry, they have three, did it say three? Yeah, I said three. They have three gifted children that have their own powers um, and then a whole bunch of stuff just starts happening. So I thought that looked really interesting and I picked this one up. So that was a free library find. And then this one I picked up, which was also a free library find, is Little Disasters by Randall Klein or Klein, I'm not sure. But this one looked really good too. There's so many that looked so good. And this one's cute. It has a red cover with the, the black spine. So cute. One here. It's a gripping novel about two young married couples whose lives collide in a pile up of deceit and indiscretions. So little disasters. That one looks so good. I really kind of want to read that one right away. And then this one also looked really good, and it is Sunrise Highway by Peter Blonner. Could be his last name. Not sure. So this one looks, what is this hair doing? Like, whatever. It looks really good as well. So basically what I've got out of this one is it kind of talks about an island, a Long Island schoolgirl that's found gruesomely murdered, and there's like a, lo a local prosecutor that turns a troubled teenager known as Joey T from a suspect to a star witness, and then it goes on to talk about how they end up finding dozens of dead women and, ooh, serial killer territory. So she discovers a deep and sinister web of connections between the victims and some of the most powerful political figures in the region. So, looks really good. Did we check out the cover of this one? No. Pretty blue book with some yellowish, goldish type writing. I don't know, I'm weird like that. Does anybody else ever do that? I always do that. Another thing I do whenever I find a book if it's from Goodwill or Free Library, wherever it's from, I pick it up if it's used. And I always go to the front page and see if the author signed it. Um, because you would seriously be surprised on some of these pages where the author actually signed some of these books. So, always something to look for. Something I look for. And then, this one again kind of gave me the same vibes as that book. Um, this one is called Wonder Valley by Ivy Pachota. So this one sounds really interesting, you guys. Um, I'll read you a little bit of the front cover here. Um, this one talks about how when a teenage boy runs away from his father's mysterious commune, he sets in motion a domino effect that will connect six people all desperate for hope and love scattered across the sun-bleached canvas of Los Angeles. So that's what this one's about. It looks like it's like a contemporary book, so it looks really, really good. Definitely wanted to pick this one up and check it out and read it. This one looks like this in the front cover or under the dust. What are you doing? My dog is so weird. Like, I wish you guys could see her better. Can you see her? There you are. There's the Gemma Gemma. She loves, whenever I get new books, like she's doing it right now and you can't see it. Whenever I bring new books home, she's always licking them and sniffing them. And she's, I don't know, like... Do they come from houses with other animals, maybe, so she can smell them? I don't know. But she's a weirdo. Are you a weirdo? Are you a weirdo? Are you a little weirdo? Ah! Are you a weirdo? Whoa, you guys got a little wonky there after I tried to move ya. No falling. Stay. So the next book that I want to show you then for this haul is a Nora Roberts book. I absolutely love Nora Roberts as an author. I actually picked this one up from Walmart. Yep, I got this one, and then I had to pick my daughter up a book that day. So we got this one, and then she got, like, Demon Slayer. I believe it was a manga book. And this one right here is Nora Roberts' The Obsession, which 
sounded so, so good. And the back says, Naomi Bowes lost her innocence the night she followed her father into the woods and freeing the girl trapped in the root cellar. Naomi revealed the horrible extent of her father's crimes and made him infamous. No matter how close she gets to happiness she can't outrun the sins of thomas david bows so that sounds really good i have so many books i want to read it's just insane the next ones i want to show you i actually got from half price books well this isn't a book but it's four books so i wanted to show you guys it was $3.99 and it is a LED book light, flexible and easy clip-on reading light. And you can clip it like right onto your book. I don't know if you can see that. But this is what it looks like. It's got a 360 degree flexible gooseneck. So it is battery operated. So that's kind of nice. Um, but it just clips onto your books. So I can read at night not hurt my eyes. So I got that from Half Price Books. And then because, like I said, this year I want to force myself into some different genres of books, mm -hmm, I told myself, this is kind of hard to believe, but is she a thirsty queen? <laughs> um, it's kind of hard to believe, especially for I like to call myself a book nerd. I've never really read a graphic novel, nor have I read manga. I know, I know. I'm behind the times. My daughter is a avid manga reader, anime watcher. She loves everything manga. So because she loves manga, she also loves graphic novels. And I decided that it was high time this new year of 2022 that I tried out some graphic novels and manga myself. So I went over to the graphic novel area over in Half Price Books. This one was $5.99. Um, the list price for this book is $16.99. So it is called A Girl in the Himalayas. David, I don't know if it's Jesus or Jesus Vignali. Not really quite sure how to pronounce that, so I'm sorry that I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, but this is the one I'm honestly going to tell you guys. I read the top part just right here, and I was kind of like, ooh, ooh, I could do this. So it says, A Girl in the Himalayas is a wonderful fable about learning the value of this incredibly magic world we live in, which we can so easily forget, and how sometimes we must protect this world from the dangerous illusions we create and come to believe. That sounds so good. So basically, a graphic novel is, it's a comic book, kind of, of sorts, I guess. To me, that's how I would look at it, I guess, because like I said, this will be the first actual graphic novel I read, but the illustrations are so cute. The drawings are just freaking adorable. Like, this little girl is so cute, and there's this page in here where there's like these creatures, and now I'm probably not going to find it because I just kind of flipped through it, and I was like, okay, this, I'm, I'm going to read this, but... Like, this page right here, there's this little, like, doll thing right here. And it totally reminded me of, like, the Lilo and Stitch doll. Mm-hmm. So I got this one. This is going to be my first graphic novel that I'm going to read this year. I think I'm going to put this on my TBR list for next month. This month, so far, I've read 10 books, you guys. I've read 10 books. So I think this is going to be on my to be read list for maybe February. Not sure, but I did it. I did it. I got a graphic novel and I honestly can't wait to read it. It looks so cute. And then this was from today as well when my husband and I went to Half Price Books and Barnes and Noble. One of the other goals I kind of had for myself this year was to actually read some classics, I guess you want to say. And I've read, obviously, the classics like Alice in Wonderland and things like that, um, Peter Pan, those. But I really want to read some more 
classics. So I did end up picking up this one. It is a Barnes & Noble exclusive, and I got it for $10. And she, she be hefty. Like, she is a hefty book, but it's really pretty. I love this book. It looks, so, I, I, I can't say I love the book. I haven't read it, but I love the cover. I love how this would look sitting on your pretty, pretty bookshelves. Um, and I guess what really got me for this one, it was $10. I don't know if I just even told you guys that or not, but I like that it has the painted edges. I'm sure there's a more technical term for that, but I just like the colored edges on here. When I picked up this book, I read the quote on the back of this book and I was like, okay, decision made. This is the book I'm getting. I don't care that she's a big mamma jamma. I want this book. So on the back it says, it is in vain to say, human beings ought to be satisfied with tranquility. They must have action and they will make it if they cannot find it. And that is by the author Charlotte Bronte. Oh, this book is so pretty. I love these designs back here and the way it looks. There's a quote I just read. So this is Jane Eyre and I want to read um, Pride and Prejudice, but I had a bunch of people tell me don't read Pride and Prejudice until you read Jane Eyre. So I don't know if that's like a true thing or not, but it's okay because I now have this book and I can read it. Good Lord, there are, oh, look at the inside cover. The inside cover pages are so pretty. It looks like that like marbled, oh my goodness, it's so pretty. So I wanted to check and see how many pages were in this beast, and it looks like there's like 507. So this is gonna be one that might take a little while to get through. I don't know when I want to read this one, but all I know is I'm very happy to have it, and it was only $10, and I think this is plain, but it's beautiful, so loving that one, and then as I said, I also wanted to get into manga, so I wanted to read something that was kind of going to not turn me off to the whole manga world, um, like I said, I've never read a manga, and for other people that might not know, like, the only thing I really know is how you have to read the book. And I think that's going to take me quite a while to get used to. So, I had a lot of people recommend this book because they said it was just tear-jerking, heartbreaking, you're crying through the whole book, it's like a friendship, love story, whatever. Um, so basically, I'll tell you what I know about it. This is the complete collection number one, and I feel like this video is going to be an hour long, you guys. This is Orange, a story by Ishigo Takano. I probably said that wrong too, but what I know about manga is basically the book is backwards, I guess you want to say. So you start at the back cover and you read it backwards. Look at that. That's so cute. I am going to read this one, even though she looks pretty big, too. It's seriously going to be kind of a fast read because it's manga. A quick synopsis of this book is this girl gets a letter from herself from the future, and it's telling her about a new boy that's going to come to their school and that he is going to commit suicide if she doesn't intervene and befriend him and stop him, basically, is what I got out of it. So, it sounds really, really good, and this is going to be my first manga book. So, I have now a first graphic novel and my first manga, and I can't wait to read this one. The last one that I got from Barnes & Noble was this book right here. It's Edgar Allan Poe, and it's his Illustrated Tales, and it was only $10, and it is beautiful. Like, it is so stinking beautiful. Like, look at this book. The illustrations inside this book are freaking awesome. I don't want to make this, like, two million hours long, but this book looks so good, and it's just a collection of Edgar Allan Poe's stories. So, this was my other one. And I think 
that is it for my books. It's not it. Actually, you know what, you guys? This is so long, I'm not going to keep you guys here for any longer. Um, I'm going to save this one because I got an Amazon book in the mail. Very exciting in here. So I'm going to save this for next time. So if you guys want to stop back in for another reading vlog, you'll get to see what's in these packages. So I'm excited. And we're going to open those packages in the next video because holy smokes, like... I feel like I've just talked and talked and talked and talked, which I have. I guess I didn't realize, like, the amount of people out there that also enjoy reading. And not a lot of people around me or in my family are big into books like I am, so I don't have anybody to talk to about my books and things like that. So, yeah. When I found this whole world here on YouTube of people that just do like, oh, they get together and do buddy reads and they do like live streams where they talk about their books that they read together and I've just been like sucked right in to that world and yeah, I don't know why I'm playing with flounder but I'm just a big child and I love stuffed animals and I love flounder so um, basically I'm going to end this here. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for checking out all of my books. Um, we're going to open up these packages in the next reading vlog that I'll start tomorrow because I have to get these packages open because there's something inside them that I want to start and it's not just a book. Um, it has to do with keeping track of books though, if that gives you any idea. I think it'll be really cool and I hope some more book nerds like me find this video interesting or I hope that you found maybe some books that you want to try and read or check out or whatnot. So I'll try not to give like full spoilers in any of these videos about the books I'm reading unless you want me to do like a book review where I'll alert you to the fact that I'm going to totally spoil the book for you by telling you about what's inside of it. But I'm going to wrap this up you guys. So Please let me know what you thought about this video in the comments below. Be nice. Be kind. Don't make Flounder cry. Don't make that, don't make Flounder cry. And let me know in the comments below. Are there things you'd like to see? Are there books you would like to recommend to me? All of that good stuff, you can leave it in the comments below because I'm all about it. I love it. I love reading comments. And... I'm kind of excited about sharing my thoughts and sharing my books. We're going to put my bookshelves together upstairs. We're going to decorate my bookshelves. We're going to do all that fun stuff in these vlogs. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being you. Thanks for allowing me to be me. And as always, stay random, guys. I'll see you in the next vlog. Bye.